Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be going over the Bone, Stone, and Wood series by Blake R. Wolf. Uh, currently, there's only three books in the series, and the story is unfinished at the moment. The first book is called Exordium, the second book is called Arbitrium, and the third book is called Profundum. Uh, this is an epic uh, fantasy adventure novel. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this author, he writes a lot of LGBT friendly novels. He tends to have two genres of novels that he likes to write. The first is more of a friendship building adventure type novels uh, where a character goes on a grand adventure, makes friends along the way. This is by far my favorite series of genre from this author. The second set of novels are basically romance heavy. I've read one or two of them by the author. I really didn't care for him. He seems to be really heavy into the romance. I guess that's what's popular now. But I prefer the adventure novels. And that's what, exactly what this book is. Uh, in fact, he has three different adventure novels I've come across. My favorite is the Crystalline, Crystalline Chronicles. This the, is my second favorite, The Bone, Stone, and Wood. And then the third that I just got through reading was The Grimoire, King, Grimoires of Kings. So I'm going to do videos on those other books at some other time, and I do hope to come across more of his adventure novels because I think that's where he really excels are these adventure novels. Not really the romance, but to each his own. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about this series, The Bone, Stone, and Wood. It basically takes place in a fantasy, fantasy world called Lycoris. Um, I'm not sure if that's what it was called back in the day, but I know in the present point in time in this novel that's what it's called so to do a little bit of world building basically back in the day in this world of lycoris all of these great races lived together you had humans dwarves elves orcs uh, they all lived together in prosperity peace and harmony magic was abundant everyone used magic including humans uh, food was abundant everything was great great and happy now the world was basically looked at, looked after or protected by three gods you had the elder elder owl of the sky <laughs> it's a bit of a hard word to say the great serpent of the sea and the sovereign bear of the earth and together they basically ruled over and protected lycoris unfortunately one day there was a calamity and these three gods were killed and the world was almost destroyed all of the great civilizations, the humans, the elves, the dwarves, were nearly wiped out. After this war, this calamity, uh, which they actually became known as the decimation, uh, basically the remnants and survivors of this world were forced to basically try to survive on their own. Now, at the beginning of the novel, you don't really know much about this decimation other than it nearly destroyed the world, and now people are struggling to survive. Um, this book actually picks up, I think it's about a thousand years after this decimation. Uh, and humans and all the other creatures are basically struggling in this dying world. Um, so before I get into the characters, the book actually centers around a guy, Knox. Um, he lives in the city of Cald, which is in the Jade Lowlands or it's near the Jade Lowlands. Um, basically in this world... A human king, or at least we assume he's human, we don't actually know, but the king has basically created this church. This, or maybe the religion came first, but there's this church of Ry Rylea. It's R I L A Y A. I'm not exactly sure how you say that. Rylea. Um, basically, this church believes that. Or the story goes that humans and all the other creatures of the world became very greedy and they began using too much magic and all that magic use basically drained the gods of their magic and basically killed them. So in order to allow the gods to come back to this world, they have basically outlawed any kind of magical practices, any kind of creatures uh, such as orcs or elves who are uh, basically... Uh, attuned to magic or can or really adept at using magic are basically hunted down hunted down and killed because their goal is to try to bring back the old gods and the king is part of this religion 
Not sure if he created it or if the church basically indoctrinated the king. Not quite sure on the specifics of that, but basically this church and the king himself have created what's called the Holy Knights. Um, now the Holy Knights, they can use magic. They are free to use as much as they want. Their whole goal, goal, whole, whole goal basically is to protect humans and basically prevent anyone from using magic and uh, using any kind of magical artifacts. So each of these holy knights looked after different segments of the kingdom and they prevent any kind of magic use. Um, and they're, they're not good guys either. You know, they're very bad. They basically torture and kill people left and right. Um, it's not very good. So basically the story picks up with this guy Knox. He's a young man who happens to be half human and half elf. So his father was an elf who left when he was very young and never returned. And his mother is human. Now, because he is a half breed and he's half elf, he has a hard time basically finding work, you know, and he has to keep his elf heritage a secret because if the Holy Knights find out about it, he could end up being killed. So basically, he's had a very lonely childhood growing up. Uh, when he gets older, his mother ends up getting sick and she needs a very expensive medication in order for her to survive. Uh, unfortunately, the regular jobs in the city of Cald, where he lives, uh, doesn't pay enough for him to basically afford the medication that he needs. So basically what Knox does is he becomes a scrounger. Now, in this world, be, after the decimation, there are tons of cities and tons of ancient ruins scattered all over the place. So what people do is, is they end up going out to these ruins and they end up scrounging for any kind of materials that they can sell any kind of like armor, uh, precious metals. I mean, even iron is considered a precious metal in this world. Uh, platinum is very valuable. Um, so anything that they can find, they can get, take back, sell, make some quick, easy money. Not really easy because it is dangerous outside the cities. And in these ruins, they're usually monster infested. So uh, yeah, I mean, he's forced to go out, forced to go scrounge just so he can get enough money for his uh, medication for his mother. And this is where the story picks up as he's going out uh, to some ruins that he frequents quite often. And unfortunately, it's been all picked over because he's not the only scrounger in the city of Cald that goes out. Uh, unfortunately, because he can't, didn't find anything out on his adventure, he's unable to afford his mother's medication. Now, Knox is definitely a bit of a lonely man. You know, all he has is his mother and this uh, girl who's his best friend named Abby. And basically, when he goes out on his scrounging adventures, uh, Abby comes and watches his mother. Um, and then uh, before he leaves, you know, his mother, he has a conversation with his mother. And basically, his mother tells him, look, don't worry about me. You just need to focus on your own happiness. I wish you could find someone. I wish you could find a woman to marry. You know, and she even makes a comment, you know, Hey, I would even be happy with a man. As long as you're happy, man, woman, doesn't matter. Of course, Knox doesn't want to hear it. You know, he's worried about losing his mother. He's worried about making money, making an income. So unfortunately, because his little scrounge adventure was unsuccessful, he decides to he needs to take a different approach to getting money. So one day while he's at a tavern, he ends up coming across three people. Uh, it was a human woman a male dwarf and a male elf and they too have been having a hard time scrounging so they decide to go on a more riskier adventure of venturing into the hollow uh, the hollow are basically a series of large cavern and cave systems that run under lycoris um, they used to be home to the dwarves and maybe some other races i even think the orcs used to live down there or something but there's all these old remnants old civilizations down there Unfortunately, the hollow is extremely dangerous. There's all kinds of really dangerous monsters down there. Anyone that goes into the hollow usually does not come back out alive, which means because not a lot of people have been down there, there could be all kinds of wealth and everything down there. They probably wouldn't even have to go very far into the hollow to get what they need. So overhearing these three scroungers talk, Knox decides he wants to join them. So he approaches them and and they basically do a little testing of his skills 
and they decide he's worthy to join them. So they end up heading out to the hollow. Now this is something Knox usually doesn't do. He, he definitely doesn't go to the hollow, but he definitely doesn't go as part of groups. He did that once before, and the people he went with ended up uh, basically stabbing him in the back and leaving him for dead. Luckily, he did manage to survive. Um, but unfortunately, he's desperate, so he decides to pair up with these three people. They head out into the hollow. While they're there, they end up coming across this platinum cylinder called the clavis. Um, after they get a hold of the clavis, it becomes stuck to Nox, like he physically cannot remove it from his body. At the same time, they're attacked by the undead, called Drogs, who want to kill him and get the clavis back. So they end up running through the hollow, through these underground, underground caverns, through these ruins of these ancient cities trying to escape the Drog. Unfortunately, Nox ends up becoming separated from his three companions and has to venture through the hollow himself. He ends up getting attacked by spiders, um, more drog. Eventually, he ends up releasing the clavis. It ends up turning into this crystallized ring uh, that he's unable to remove from his hand. And in the process, he ends up releasing a celestial spirit who was bound to the clavis and takes the form of a black fox, which he names Zeke. Um, I love Zeke. Anytime a novel brings an animal like that in as a companion, I absolutely love it. Um, he actually did this in the Crystalline Chronicles, where they had the, this horse named Marybelle that ends up joining the group. And I, I love that. I loved Marybelle. I loved her whole, how much they loved that horse. So bringing animals in is definitely a way to get me catched into the series. So basically you have Nox, he's in the hollow, he releases the clavis, um, and then of course you get this celestial spirit named Zeke who appears. Uh, unfortunately Zeke doesn't know why he's there, he was just traveling amongst the stars, and then one day he ends up bound to the clavis and he's waking up there with Nox. So he doesn't really know much what's going on, Nox also doesn't know what's going on, so they're both quite confused. They end up making their way through the hollow, getting attacked time after time after again. I mean, it's filled with a lot of action, a lot of suspense. They eventually make it out of the hollow. Um, they try to make their way back to Cald. Because Nox, he, he's through at this point. He just wants to get back to his mother. He wants to try to sell this platinum uh, cylinder that he's gotten across, that he's came across. That way he can get a bunch of money for his mother's medication. Uh, along the way, he meets some orcs, you know, and they do some talking with him. Um, and then eventually they come across a man called Era. He is actually a, he's called a bledged, which is a, a term I've never come across. But basically, he's a werewolf. Um, I'm not sure where the author got this term bledig from. Um, I've, I've tried Googling it, and I wasn't able to come up with any references really to werewolves. So it could be just something he just created. But, uh, yeah, basically he's a werewolf. Um, shortly, at, basically this all happens in the first book. And then eventually we go on to the second and third books where Nox, Era, and Zeke basically learn that the clavis is basically a key. Um, that these three gods, the Elder Owl, the Great Serpent, and the Sovereign Bearer, before they were killed, they placed all their power into these beacons. Um, basically these vessels. Um, these vessels are basically scattered around Lycoris and only the person who has the clavis can access these beacons and release their power. Um, once all three powers have been released, the three gods can then be resurrected and come back to the world. Um, Nox, unfortunately, is not very happy with this. You know, he does not want this quest. He does not want this adventure. He just wants a quiet, calm life and he wants his mother alive you know but unfortunately he is forced onto this adventure um i'm not going to say exactly what forces him onto his adventure but it is it's quite sad like the beginning of the story is very very sad filled with lots of death lots of bad luck um but it gets better towards the end further along in the books it does get better so basically Knox, era and zeke 
for all their own different reasons, they set out on this adventure together to find these beacons and to resurrect the three gods. Um, but yeah, they go on this credible adventure. They board a ship. They're attacked by a sea monster at one point. They're marooned on an island. And then they're in this uh, volcano that's not extinct because there is lava flowing from it. So, so it is an active volcano, which eventually explodes later on. Um, yeah, it, it's a great adventure. I love, love adventure novels. This is right up my alley. Um, if it's something you love too, you love adventure novels, I highly recommend this book. You know, there's even a couple of mysteries uh, that we have yet to see. Um, for instance, later on in the series, you learn that the decimation was actually caused by a fourth god um, that actually came from the sky that's not part of this earth. We don't exactly learn a whole lot about him, but basically this fourth god resulted in the decimation and resulted in the death of these three other gods. You know, and you can't actually kill a god. They just lose their physical form. So you do get this. Nox does speak to the gods. Um, but basically, they want their physical form back. They want to come back to the world. And that's his whole goal, his whole journey on this adventure. Um, another few unanswered questions are having to deal with the Holy Knights. Um, in the third book, you end up learning that, well, you end up learning that basically the Holy Knights, there are different ranks within the Holy Knights. And the higher up in rank you have, the more powerful you are, the more magical items you have, the more magic power you can do. In the third book, we come across a prime called Forcia, Forcitha. Not exactly sure how you say her name, but basically the primes are like the top, top of the Holy Knights. They're extremely powerful, extremely dangerous. Um, and you end up learning Forcithia is an elf. Um, so it makes me wonder if all the primes are elves, um, because we don't actually get to see their faces. They're all covered out in armor every time one shows up. Um, it's not until the third book do we finally see the face of one of them. Uh, yeah, and she happens to be an elf. And elves are, uh, I think, like the, the most magical creatures in the world. Like they have a very innate, innate ability to use magic. And the, all the primes have very innate abilities when it comes to magic. So it really makes me wonder. I think all the primes might be elves. We don't actually learn that in the series, but that is a bit of a mystery. Another little mystery we come across is Nox's father. He left when Nox was really little, and we don't know why. Um, you know, it makes me wonder if Nox maybe Nox's father went off to become a prime. Or maybe he died, you know, scrounge. Maybe he was a scrounger as well. Maybe he even discovered the clavis. Because there is a story in the very first book, the very first few pages, it describes this other person trying to get a hold of the clavis and they end up dying at the hands of the drog. But it does have a year date in that chapter. And this takes place like 300 years prior to the events of this book. So I'm not exactly convinced that that was Nox's father unless they have some weird way of counting the years. Um, but yeah, great adventure. It actually starts out like at the very first, it's hard, hard to explain without going into the details, but the characters, they really don't like each other at first. And eventually over time, they're forced to spend time with their, each other, forced to be on this adventure. And eventually they start developing friendships and starting to really care about each other. And I really like that. That's this author has done this in multiple series where he has the same idea of putting a bunch of strangers together. And at first they may not like each other, but they're forced to be together. And eventually they develop a friendship. I really love those type of stories. And I really look forward to more adventures like this from this author. Um, I think I've touched on pretty much everything I can in these three books without going into huge spoiler uh, sections of it. But um, unfortunately, I do have to admit that this series of books is actually on hold right now. Um, when the first book came out, the second book came out like six months later. The third book came out about nine months. Um, so when I got finished reading this third book and I went online to try to get the fourth, I discovered it had been over a year since the last one came out. So I sent a direct message to Blake Wolf, um, the author, and 
he re replied back to me, thankfully. I was really worried he would not reply back. But I asked him if, if this series is still in the works or if it's canceled completely. And he said that unfortunately this series was not well received. And at this point in time, the series is on hold. Which sucks because I really like the adventure. I really want it to continue. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video. Is, you know, if it's something you find interesting and you think you really will like this series. You know, then perhaps, you know, messaging the author. You know, purchasing the books will somehow draw up interest. And maybe if enough interest comes along, he will be... He'll want to finish the story. We can finally get an ending to it. Um, I'm not sure why it wasn't well received. I, I kind of have an idea. I haven't gone and read any comments or anything like that, but uh, the first book is a bit hard to handle. You know, it is filled with a lot of bad luck. A lot of people die. It is very, very sad. But in the second book, it does start to come around. He does start to have a little bit of good luck in a way. And he does seem to get some hope in the second book. Because the first book is like, you're losing hope left and right. Um, so I think that's partly why it was not well received. I don't know if that's the case. But if you stick with it, it does get better. Especially the third book. The characters are really starting to come together. You know, Knox and Era are starting to develop a little bit of a romantic relationship for each other. You know, Zeke and Knox are finally starting to understand each other because um, at first they kind of hated each other but now they've started to really build a friendship so yeah uh, if you like adventure i highly recommend this it does get better and uh just be aware there is no ending yet to the story the author said it's not completely canceled he does plan on finish it he just doesn't know when so all right well if you like this video please be sure to like it um, subscribe for more videos like this. Be sure to check out the description below. I have a link to the author's website as well as where you can find the series so that you can purchase, purchase it for yourself. So thanks for joining me and I will see you next time.